Welcome to Floracast, the podcast for greenhouse growers. Floracast is brought to you by Greenhouse Grower Magazine, in conjunction with the University of New Hampshire, North Carolina State University, Kansas State University, and Cornell University. Thanks to this podcast sponsor. This week's podcast is from Raymond Cloyd of Kansas State University. Hello there, and welcome to this podcast in which we will discuss diagnosing insect and mite pest problems. Yeah! First of all, as you look over a crop in the greenhouse, it is important to determine how do you know that you have an insect and or mite pest problem? In order to properly diagnose and detect an insect and or mite pest problem, it is recommended to routinely scout your crop or growing area. Scouting involves the use of yellow sticky cards to capture winged or adult stages of certain insect pests and visual inspection of individual plants to detect life stages such as eggs, nymphs, larvae, and pupa and certain insect and mite pests that are not captured on yellow sticky cards. During visual inspections, it is critical to look at leaf undersides because the life stages, eggs, larvae, nymphs, pupa, and adults, of most greenhouse insect and mite pests are located on the underside of leaves. The one exception is fungus gnat larvae, which are located in the growing medium. It is important to determine the types of patterns associated with symptoms expressed by plants that are being fed upon so as to determine if insect and or mite pests are actually causing the problem. There are three typical symptomatic patterns, random, uniform, and clumped. A crop infested with insect and or mite pest will result in either random or a clumped distribution of symptoms on the crop. A uniform distribution of plant symptoms is usually not associated with insect and or mite pest. This is typically affiliated with an environmental issue, for example, inadequate or insufficient temperatures and or light conditions, or a cultural problem such as improper watering or fertility. An additional item that needs to be fully understood is the feeding behavior of insect and or mite pests. There are six distinct feeding behaviors among the different insect and or mite pests that feed on greenhouse grown crops including one, phloem feeders such as aphids, whiteflies, mealybugs, and soft scales, two, xylem feeders such as true bugs, spittlebugs, and many leafhopper species, three, chewers such as beetles, caterpillars, and fungus gnat larvae, four, miners such as leaf miners, five chlorophyll feeders such as two-spotted spider mite and six mesophyll and epidermal fluid feeders in this case thrips. Each feeding behavior will result in distinct characteristic plant symptoms that may be used to diagnose which insect and or mite pest is causing the problem. Because phloem feeders such as aphids, whiteflies, and mealybugs are removing the food from plants, the typical symptoms expressed by plants are stunting, wilting, leaf yellowing, and leaf distortion as shown in this image of basil infested with whiteflies. A typical sign or secondary damage caused by most phloem feeding insects is the presence on plant parts of honeydew, a clear sticky liquid which is shown by the image on their left and or black pseudomyl fungus, which is represented by the image on the right. Since two spotted spider mites feed within the cell contents and remove chlorophyll from plant tissues, their feeding injury or damage to plants is often referred to as speckling. This is because plant leaves appear as if they've been poked with a fine pin. Sometimes, two spotted spider mite feeding damage causes plant leaves to appear bronzish in color. Thrips, in this case the western flower thrips, feed within the mesophyll and epidermal cells so they cause plant leaves to have a silvery appearance as demonstrated in this image of thrips feeding damage on a chrysanthemum leaf. 
This symptom is expressed because as the thrips feed and remove plant fluids, the empty cells fill up with air, giving the damaged plant parts a silvery appearance. Thrips feeding injury and or damage is very noticeable on open flowers as exhibited on this chrysanthemum flower, although this is dependent on the flower color. Leaf minor larval feeding causes very distinct symptoms on plants such as serpentine or blotched mine areas on leaves as shown in this image. Fungus gnat larvae, which reside in the growing medium, have chewing mouth parts. As such, fungus gnat larvae feed on plant roots, thus preventing plants from uptaking water and nutrients. This results in plants exhibiting typical above ground symptoms such as stunting, wilting, and or yellowing of plant leaves, especially the older leaves. If a plant is suspected of being fed upon by fungus gnat larvae, then the plant should be removed from the container and the root system and surrounding growing medium should be thoroughly inspected for fungus gnat larvae, which have black head capsules. This image shows a Gerber daisy crop infested with fungus gnat larvae. Note the random or clump distribution of the plants exhibiting symptoms, in this case dieback, of fungus gnat larval feeding injury or damage. In summary, in order to accurately diagnose insect and or mite pest problems on greenhouse grown crops, it is essential to observe patterns, for example clumped, random, and or uniform distribution of injury or damage among crops grown in greenhouses to determine if you are actually dealing with an insect and or mite pest problem. Remember, Symptomatic patterns in general associated with insect and or mite pest problems will be either clumped or random, not uniform. Furthermore, it is important to understand the different feeding behaviors of insect and or mite pest in order to determine the types of visible injury or damage symptoms that will be expressed by plants. Finally, regularly scout crops to quickly diagnose insect and or mite press problems early on and before populations reach outbreak proportions. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to contact me. Also, I would appreciate any feedback you may have associated with this podcast. Have a good day. Thanks for downloading this episode of the Floracast series and thanks to our sponsor, Goldsmith. 18 years ago, Goldsmith founder Glenn Goldsmith decided to take on a challenge to create a vinca series that was resistant to disease. Gardeners have long loved vinca, but often struggled with it in challenging weather. His goal was to improve the performance and durability of this garden favorite. At last, a success, a vinca resistant to aerial phytophthora was born. Cora and Cora Cascade vinca are strong, beautiful, and long-lasting in the garden. Come back next week for the next edition of the Floriculture Podcast Series.